I'm Joe Stedman, and sometimes I watch war gaming news. <laughs> here people's choice grognard of the year 2019 it's time to vote i've been waiting for this because it was so exciting last year when stuka joe took the maiden the maiden black and um so this will be opened as of now leave your votes in the comments below i'll be taking them down by hand i'll do all the hard work i'm here to do the hard work you guys, don't worry about it. Okay, okay. I'm sorry I was confusing and a lot of people probably mis Well, a lot of people. A couple of people misunderstood what I meant by numbers of votes or voting, whatever. Vote for one guy or one company or one designer or the, 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 the postman. Just one person. One person or one company. Not one company, one person, one designer, one developer, the artist. Not yet. Huh? Eh? I work, huh? You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, vote for designer, best company, I mean, the company you like the best, uh, developer, artist, anything, your mama, anything. Who do you want to be Grognard? And the votes will close December 28th. Boom. That's the last Saturday of the year, December 28th, 2019. Vote in, I don't know, large numbers, blah, blah, blah. What do voting people say? Uh, whatever. Vote. Have fun. I know I'm going to have fun. And I have no idea who it's going to be this year. Have a good show. Okay, this is embarrassing to say, okay, but I have to say it. I don't count. There's going to be a conflict of interest. Do not vote for me. I'll scratch it out and you lose your vote. No. Nada. Do you know how much trouble I could get? Some guy on this interweb, and there's a lot of guys, girls, whatever. They're just waiting for someone like me to mess up. And then, boom! So, no. No Dan Pincaldi, no no enemies here. Again, I can't believe I'm putting myself in the status of Grognard, which I am not. All right? Peace. Hallenspiele and Westphalia. This is a game designed by Tom Russell. The duration of this game is 120 minutes. It's a six-player game. Solitaire suitability is low. And what you get with this game is a 17 by 22 inch map sheet. 56 debt tokens, 142 wooden pieces, 36 cards, and a 20-page rulebook. A game from the Dream Team! Designer Fred Manzo and developer Herman Lutman come out with Escape from Hades. And what you get with this game is two 17 by 22 inch map sheets, one counter sheet, one four-page player aid, a 16-page rulebook, and 51 cards. A game for gamers, made by gamers, by Flying Pig Games. ID Jester is giving us a playthrough of Tiger Leader by DDG. The scenario is France 1940. This is a game designed by Dan Person. Mo! Of Mo's Game Table! Whilst! Mo was at the San Diego Historical Game Convention. This is Harold Buchanan's baby. 
he interviewed Mark Herman and also Gene Billingsley of GMT Games. Mo is also doing a giveaway. He's giving away the Doolittle Raid, a game designed by Jerry White, published by GMT. Get your game at Mo's Game Table. You know, I've played this game, the Doolittle Raid, Enemy Coast Ahead, and the preparation that it involves before you actually get out to do your operation. You know, um, I love it, man. It's realistic. It's a solo game. And yes, you're, you're there, you know, you have your little beverage of choice. And you're preparing for a raid. And that's the way it was! Come on. The gentlemen of the Players Aid are unboxing Europe in Turmoil Prelude to the Great War. This is a game designed by Chris Van Burden, published by Compass Games. And they are also unboxing Field Commander Alexander, designed by Dan Verson, published by DVG Games. They are also reviewing The Wars of Marcus Aurelius, Rome 170 to 180 CE, a game designed by Robert Daleski, published by Hollenspieler. USA Patriot 4163 is checking out Okinawa, a game designed by Arrigo Veliconga, published by Tiny Battle Publishing, and he's got a couple of videos out playing this game. Marco Omni Gamer, aka Marco Wargamer, is reviewing Conflict of Heroes 3rd Editioning Awakening the Bear, a game designed by Gunther and Uwe Eichert, published by Academy Games. The Gimpy Gamer continues his Conflict of Heroes Awakening the Bear review through This is the Finale, and also gives us a Hellboy board game overview. Counterproductive Games gives you a couple of his thoughts on Heroes of Stalingrad, the game designed by Jan and Clem, published by Devil Pig Games. Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to the Centurions Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. The first game we are reviewing on our website this week is The Chosen Few from Victory Point Games. It has very fun mechanics, but it's a very difficult game, and it's not very thematic and not very historically accurate, but a lot of people enjoy playing the game, so uh, read the review and see if it's the right game for you. The uh, first game we'll be doing a first look at on our YouTube channel is Merrill's Marauders from Decision Games. It's a Commando series mini game. Uh, looks very interesting. I think I'm going to enjoy it when I try it out. Last game we're doing a first look at on our YouTube channel is Nicaragua from Strategy and Tactics magazine. It's one of Joe Miranda's first games. Uh, it looks kind of like a Brian Train game. I have a feeling maybe Brian Train's uh, games might have been influenced by it, but hope to try it one day and see how it is. Hope to see you guys soon on our website and on our YouTube channel. Have a good evening. Awakening the Bear, third edition, available now. Stones of Steel, third edition, available now. has a video out on his YouTube channel and they interview the Eagles of Gaeta. This is the president of a war game company. Now the Eagles of Gaeta, that name Gaeta, short story here. When I was young and I was a brat, like I ain't a brat now, my mom used to threaten me because she came a couple of kilometers away from Gaeta and she would always say in an Italian, she would say, stop the film, se not te manda Gaeta, meaning Stay quiet or stop moving around because I'll send you to Gaeta. And that word Gaeta, 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 I was, I was young. I would have nightmares. Gaeta is a town, first of all. And the reason why she would send me to Gaeta is because there was a prison there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm haunted by Gaeta. Ricardo Massini, the professor, does a playthrough of Band of Brothers, a game published by Worthington Games and designed by Jim Crone, and he also quotes Shakespeare in Italian. 
Ma chi lo sapeva? Jason Cruz of AJ Toynbee of Hexes and Soldiers of I don't know what else he's gonna what else what other moniker or whatever you call it Avatar or Squamatar he's gonna add there but he's having a party at his house and there's gonna be wild boar fighting free beer gumbo and crawdads woohoo AJ Toynbee subscriber appreciation day be there or just Lose out on the party, man. The soft-spoken but formidable foe! Jonathan Townsend is giving you his view on war to the death. Napoleon confronts Spain, 1810 to 1813. This is an Omega game. Todd, the itinerant hobbyist, is unboxing and assembling topside minis. <laughs> Gamer is continuing his magnum opus playthrough of Atlantic Wall D-Day to Falaise, the Airborne module, First German Movement and First German Combat. Rough Swordsman Wargamer is unboxing Avalanche Press Invasion 1944, an introductory game to Panzer Grenadier. Wayne Hansen is unboxing a State of Siege style solitaire war game, Jeff Davis. The Confederacy at War, designed by R. Ben Madison, and is published by White Dog Games. Combat Board Games is taking a look at Choose Your Own Adventure type books by Battleground General Arnhem 1944 and El Alamein 1942. Counterattack does a playthrough of Waterloo, Napoleon's Last Battle, Turn 2. A game designed by Alexander Berg, published by Mayfair Games. Bert Collins and the return of Frederick the Great. The reason why he calls it the return is because he's played this before. So the game is Frederick the Great, the campaign, the campaigns of the Soldier King, excuse me, 1756 to 1759. This is designed by Edward Kern and Frank Davis, published by the old Avalon Hill Game Company. Thank you. Also, Gilbert is taking a brief look at GMT's game, published in 2012, covering the battles of Rosbach, Luthen, Zorndorf, and Turgau, a game published by GMT, Prussia's Glory, the Battles of Frederick the Great, 1757 to 1760, designed by Robert Balinowski. Lock and Low Publishing has Gimpy doing the Space Infantry Resurgent Boot Camps, where he discusses combat and variable armor. Rob Orn, the strong man of war games, plays Blitzkrieg, a game by Paolo Mori, and it's Rob and Tina doing a live playthrough. The chief of Bonding with Board Game is unboxing Heroes of Stalingrad Battle Pack Number 1. If I'm not mistaken, the designers are Yan and Clem, standing for Yannick and Clemma, published by Double Pink Games. 
Tim Korchnoy of Bare Bones Wargaming gives us a solo playthrough of Triumph and Tragedy, European Balance of Power 1936 to 1945, a game designed by Craig Besant, published by GMT. <laughs> I just got back from the 24-hour marathon that we did at the Dice Tower and it was a real pleasure and an honor to be invited for that marathon. These guys work really hard, man, really hard. Anyways, one of the guests that was there was Joe Stedman. Now, I don't know if that says anything to the younger audience, but Joe Stedman was the original, was the OG with Tom Vassell of the Dice Tower. Both of them started the Dice Tower. And uh, well, Joe went on to do his stuff and Tom continued the Dice Tower. Upon meeting Joe, I, I, I was happy because 10 years ago, I used to watch the Dice Tower and Joe Stedman was the war gamer, was war game news. And uh, I used to watch his videos. He would review, play through, uh, unbox war games and I mean 10 years ago I was all giddy because I had never seen this before so this guy's the OG I'll show you some old clips and uh, we'll come back welcome to the dice tower a series of videos about games and the people who played them and now here's your host Joe Stedman I'm gonna talk about a solitaire game, B17, Queen of the Skies. Yes, a solitaire board game. You don't need a computer or anyone else to play. And this is my second favorite uh, solitaire game. My first favorite is Ambush, but uh, I thought I'd do 17 instead. Right. Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here's your host, Joe Stedman. Hi, Joe Stedman, and I uh, want to talk to you about a game I got. Now, I've been doing a lot of stuff with ASL lately, but I got a game recently, and I thought I'd tell you guys about it. It's very interesting. All right, a little back. Now, Joe is the type of guy that this guy doesn't suffer any fools. If you're an idiot, get out of his way. <laughs> uh, I don't know why he's talking to me, but anyways. Um, super nice guy super intelligent this guy's done he was in the army was a cop uh, now he's a financial advisor I i'm telling you he's gonna be a cook the next thing he's gonna be a cook the guy a chef what am i saying cook excuse me joe cook uh, sorry and um i had a great time meeting him uh we are gonna keep in touch i hope we can collaborate on something but uh, Joe is making a, a, a comeback, and I'm really happy for that. The only other guy I'm waiting for to make a comeback is Derek Case, single-handed warfare. And then my life, I mean, I, it's over. I could die. Uh, okay, I, I exaggerate. My girlfriend says I'm hysterical, but whatever. So I had a chance to interview Joe. Interview. This was like, like a Mark Herman uh, colloquial colloquial. Um, but it's just, just a conversation, just, just, we were shooting a poop, you know what I'm saying? And I asked him stuff and, uh, I recorded it. So 15 minutes and, uh, this is Joe Stedman and, uh, the guy hasn't aged a second. Anyways, here you go. I hope you enjoy it. You know, I used to I used to watch Joe Stedman. Actually, he was my my uh, re interest in back into board games because I found this dice tower thingy. And then there was this guy with his little tankette. Remember that little tankette? And not, the music, yeah. what was it? It was Kelly Ciro's. All those, was all those burning bridges? No. You know, that's copy, copyright infringement, thing. Eh? I don't care. Yeah, but Tom, Tom. Yeah, Tom wouldn't use. So early on the show, we didn't worry about that kind of stuff. 
It wasn't until after Dice Tower got big that we worried about copy. We, we, we had Cowboy Bebop for our theme song for a while. <laughs> Anyways, this is Joe Stedman, and I'm really happy that play games with Joe Stedman. At first, I thought you were a super hardcore, like, war gamer. And now you're playing, like, stupid games, man. You, you got stupid friends, you play stupid games. <laughs> no, no, I'm a very eclectic. I, I prefer war games, but when in Rome, be Roman, right? Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. I mean, same thing. And, uh, like, so, Joe, what have you been doing, man? Has it been, what, 10 years? More or less. That you, you're off the dice tower, you're not doing it anymore? And weren't you doing your own stuff? I did, video, the, I did, I did videos, but then I would give them the time to post I did some stuff with war game stuff for a while when I first left, uh, you know, Dice Tower. But well, why don't you don't shake the table, man? That's a camera on the on the table. You're shaking the table, man. You're like, uh, you're like, what's his name? Me. So uh, like, uh, just so, life. So, my wife joined the military, which is a big change. We had to move. I was a police officer, and then I left law enforcement, and then I went to uh, went back to get my master's degree, which was very time consuming. Whoa. And then. I became a financial planner. And were you working while you were doing your master's? Yeah. Oof. I was doing police work. So how long did it take you to get your master's? A couple years. Okay. Um, and then my wife's career became the, um, the lead. So I started following her. So right, we left. Right. And then uh, I did financial. I got into financial advising. Okay. So I worked with helping people with their money and stuff like that. And then I got more and more busy as I pursued the almighty dollar sign. And then it just got, uh, so recently I've decided to start my own company. And so I left working for a different firm. Now, when, when you were doing this all these years, were you still playing games or no? Just like my favorites, like I'd play ASL with a few local friends. Uh, my wife and I would play like Twilight Struggle and Hannibal versus Rome. Um, what else we play? You know, I, I hate to say this, but I've never played Twilight Struggle. Mm. Seriously? Yeah, that's, that's pretty sad. Does Tom got a copy? I'll teach you. I'd love to play it if we have time, but I mean, I don't have anybody to play with. Mm. So it's not, a, it's not a very soloable game. Is it a difficult game? No, it's not difficult at all. It's just that the, it's like, I was talking about this yesterday. Any, in my opinion, a good game will always, the, the experienced players will always win a good game. Right. If, it's, if, if everything else is equal. So like, we played Blood Rage yesterday with Sam. Right? Did right. me and you stand a chance? But he lost. Yeah, but the other guy didn't, right? The other experienced player. There's four of us. Oh, two, yeah. That, uh, two, uh, two Travis. Of us, yeah, Travis. Travis is a dog. So two, two of us were experienced, <laughs> two of us were not. And that's how I know Blood Rage is a good game, because the experienced player hands down beat us because there are certain strategies. Right, and right, right, right. Right? And Twilight Struggle is the same way. You'll never beat someone I, I, in Twilight And I Struggle. heard that. I heard that. Yeah. So going on, man, you said you were... Uh, uh, you, you were playing some games while you were going through school? Yeah, just my wife and I would play games together. The kids like games. Your wife is an avid, uh, like, ASL player? No, she'll play, she likes designer games, Euro games, and then she'll play the occasional, war she, like, she likes Twilight Struggle and um, Hammer of the Scots. Those are her two favorite games. Hammer of the Scots, isn't that a... Uh, Block game. And who does that? Worthington? Columbia. Isn't that a broken game? No. Cl Hammer of the Scots is a classic war game. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm thinking of something Super well-balanced tournament game. And the designer is... Uh, uh, it's Columbia Games, so it's Grant, uh, Grant Dangle. Get oh, uh, Dalglish, Dalglish. Yeah, yeah. So, I, like, are you planning on doing any more videos? Well, that's the thing. I just, I just left my six-hour-a-week, I mean, six-day-a-week, 14-hour-a-day job to relax and be my own boss, so I have much more free time. So I hope to get back into gaming more. And it's going to be war gaming stuff, right? War gaming stuff that I play on my own, but to be part of the hobby more, I got to be current with the current designer games because a good war gamer. See, this is controversial. I think a good war gamer will almost always win Euro games too. <laughs> I, I, but that, I, Sam's in the background and he's he's nodding in approval. He no, that says a lot. Because I lose at everything, man. Anyways, I was nodding out of approval. I apologize. <laughs> well, the point being, strategy and tactics are strategy and tactics. That's right. Right. And so that's my problem with a lot of designer game Euro games is that when I sit down to play them across, I don't want to play against the game, right? Yeah. I've said this for years. I want to play against you. Right? I understand. And so if there's any point in the game where I feel like me and you are completely disengaged from each other and our actions don't affect each other at all, uh, and then I kind of lose interest. Yeah, okay, it gets okay, boring okay. to yeah. me, right? You're right. So we played, um, 
on our marathon. What is the game we played last night? We played that game. It was a design, it was a Euro game. It was a new one. Uh, Yggdrasil, the one of the the tapestries. What's that called? Tapestry. Oh, it's called tapestry. Oh, yeah. is that what you guys played? Yeah, I played. I, play I played it. tapestry last night with Tom and them. And I won by a, I won by a lot, but I still felt I I barely liked it. it I hear it's a good game. Man. Part of the reason I liked it is because I won. It always helps, right? Mm. Humble oh, brag. <laughs> <laughs> But the other reason I liked it was because my actions, all, although subtly, did uh, affect the other players. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and the guy that kind of did his own thing, one of the uh, the brothers. Uh, the, 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 the Smurf brothers. The Smurf, the Smurf brothers, yeah. The guys from California. He did, like, it looked like he was going to win because he was just doing his own little thing and he was doing this little build, 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 build. I was like, that guy is going to kill it. But I was just going to, but I read the rules and I looked at my strategy and I says, okay, I am the uh, the fort, not whatever the guy, the, the vagabond guy, the whatever player, special ability. If I do this and this and this, and I can conquer all this territory, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of victory points. So I started doing that, and I started interfering with him, and I, I won. So, but I probably wouldn't play it again. No. Um, your content on on, I remember your old content, uh, Joe was. Reviewing games, yeah, review. not, not mainly playthroughs. You were mostly reviewing games. I did a bit of both. I did unboxings and reviews, right? Quick reviews, but then I did a whole series of like primers on some of my favorite games. Like, and, and which one was that? Mostly ASL, Advanced Squad Leader. Okay, I probably did twenty videos on ASL. Oh man, uh, okay, that must have went over my head. And then I did um, Twilight Struggles, a more in-depth view. But those are old. Those are like 10, 15 years old, those reviews. Yeah, yeah. And they're, really, they didn't, they're not very well uh, made. You know what I mean? Like the quality. Well, I mean, it's 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Did you upgrade your equipment and all that? To... I'm planning on doing that. So. And um, what's the content going to be like? Same thing? Yeah, yeah. I want to do more war game stuff. So, like, you do war games too. Yeah. Like, that's your preference. But I'll, I'll review the heavy duty war games, but you can't spit out reviews with war games because no. the rules are this thick. Yeah, yeah. And you got to play it through, and you got to, and it's hard for someone that's got not, not been any opponent, uh, opponents, uh, yeah. right? Because you have to sit there and but I mean, solo play. Have it. you ever seen what I do on the dice tower? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I goof off, basically. You know, and I'm, I'm giving you uh, an aperçu, a, what, a little uh, taste on how much fun or whatever I had with the game it's completely different than you you're way more technical than mm -hmm. I am than I am so it's it's apples and oranges but because of my wife and kids like all these kind of games I'll probably dabble in I think it's so oh, you're not just gonna do war games then. no because my point of view I think what I bring to the table and what you bring to the table is we can re talk to Euro gamers and designer gamers right we play games with them right but we can review games from a war gamers point of view you know what I mean like what was our opinions as a, primi a primary war gamer about um, whatever Euro game? So if you're a war gamer and your wife likes to play Euro games or your, all your gaming group plays Euro games, you can give them honest feedback on what to expect. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. I mean, uh, I don't know. Every, every game that I play now that's, that's Euro based has a lot of war game mechanics in it. They do. Yeah. And there's a crossover too with war games. They have a lot of Euro they are, mechanics they coming are. in. There's very few pure war games that are... Like Hex Encounter type, type stuff. I mean, GMT and different... DVG, people like... They, they make those, but there's a lot of crossover. But even now. GMT now is getting into... Uh, Chad Jensen had a couple of titles. Yeah. But he just passed away, didn't he? Yeah. It's too bad. I, 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 did you know Chad Jensen? Not personally, no. And it's funny, eh? I, I don't know Chad Jensen, but I played a lot of Combat Commander. Combat Commander is a great game, but it's not as good as ASL. That's just my opinion. They're both tactical squad level games. Yeah, but I mean, ASL probably op offers you more realistic tactical options. The biggest difference is if you're playing ASL and you run your squad across the street in front of a guy with a heavy machine well, gun. Well, you're dead. You're dead. And in Combat Commander, there's a chance he might not have the car. I know, I know. It's, kinda, it's almost like watching a... Uh, Episode of Hollywood, Hollywood yeah, version of I know, World War II, I and we, we, I mean, we, but I can appreciate that. It's yeah, fun. It's like yeah. it's a beer and pretzels game, right? I, I would say that. Where ASL is like a brain drainer. Like you are, and especially in a tournament uh, when you go to the big tournaments. Oh, stuff, that, that would kill me. Like you make one mistake and you're done. Yeah, right. But it's super fun to me. And but I mean, um, a lot of people say don't get into ASL. Like I wanted to get into ASL. They said no, it's not a game. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, that's that's true though because like I have three foot lockers of just ASL stuff. Right, and then two a toolbox and a tackle box. That's just ASL. Now, when 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 you play ASL, how often do you get bogged down in rules? Like, how often does the game stop? 
and you guys go well, through the rule book and it's, it it's, depends. If it's me and you playing and we're playing casually, we're just gonna say, uh, I don't, what do you think happens here? Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, let's just roll off. Oh, okay, yeah. I see. All right. Okay. But if you're at the tournament, then it's different. Then it's different, yeah. But then there's judges and the whole deal. And then the rule books are right there. But, you know, 90% of the time, 90% of that rule book is about 10% of the rules. You know what I mean? Joe, don't shake the table. <laughs> you're shaking the table, man. 90% of the rule book is about 10% of the rules. So that first 10% of the rule book is going to teach you everything you need to know. Everything else is exceptions upon exceptions upon exceptions. So if I'm a type of guy that uh, I'm loosey goosey, like in the, the the example you gave in Combat Commander, I charge a machine gun nest. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to fare well, eh? No, you will die at ASL. I mean, there's always the chance. Like if you roll box cars, you yeah. could jam your heavy machine gun. So there's one in a 36 chance that you might not die. Those are bad odds, right? And even if I hit you, then you have to roll for uh, damage, right? And there's like I could roll once again. I could roll box cars for damage, and maybe I. Maybe I got the shot off and I hit you, but it hit your LBE or it hit your helmet or something and you don't die. But 90% of the time, you're dead. There's Kenny. Kenny, come. This Kenny's the background. Yeah, guy. You got to bend down. You got to bend down. <laughs> come on, Kenny. Why can't you, man? Get out of here. <laughs> so, like, when, when are you planning to make a comeback? Like, do you have an uh, estimated well, I, date? Well, I've taken off. Uh, I t I've taken off October, November, December. Taking a mini vacation. Okay. I'm, I'm starting my own company. So these next few months, I'm going to start getting all ready. So hopefully 2020. Like what software are you going to use? I don't know. i got to research all that. So maybe me and you can talk. Well, sure. I mean, i got an easy software. It's called Filmora. It's, well, oh, anyways. I actually own Filmora. You're laughing. I bought it, but I, I bought it to do home movies. Yeah, you're Works laughing. Pretty well. I well, unless you're going into a high end, uh, unless you want to spend six, 700 bucks. No. Right, so I think Filmora is good. I figure what I will do is I'll just... Um, I'll review the games and I'll I'll do playthroughs and things like that and submit the submit the stuff to the Dice Tower for their content. Right. I don't need to worry about it. I'm not gonna do my own thing. I'll just do it through the Dice Tower. And where are you gonna get your music? <laughs> I'm just gonna steal it from the internet. Right? Well, hold on a second. Yeah. I'm a composer. How, how about if I compose something for you? It would be what, such seriously, Joe. It would be such a great honor to compose a piece of music for you. I'm <laughs> telling talk. you. We can talk. You know, did you watch uh, Stuka Joe's B-17 Queen? Oh, of the I love that playthrough. I right? wrote a piece of music for you, man, called it's the, the, the Stedman Steady. Really? I didn't know that. <laughs> I, did, did you die off real quick? No. Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's in uh, B-17? Yeah, I did all the music for yeah, that. Yeah, man. yeah. That's I like. I love those. I've I seen him when he first came out with them. I, there was a yeah. few episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyways. Joe Stedman, man. Joe? So nice meeting you, man. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Too cool. Ah, oh, I did the same thing with Mark Herman, man. Mark Herman's great. Ah, is he a lovely man? He is. He really is. Well, that's it. Very short conversation. I hope. Um, I hope things happen soon. Good luck, Joe. Starter. They're reprinting Thunderbolt Apache Leader, Fleet Commander Nimitz and Tiger Leader, and expansions for it. And the stretch goals are just insane. I don't know what happened to Dan. I think he fell on his head, man. And he's just giving stuff away. Check it out. Use this code. Get 25% off. What are you waiting for? On their website, obviously. Phalanx Games. And 1941 Race to Moscow. How to plan and execute the largest military campaign in history? Find out in a one, three to five player, 90 minute logistic take on Operation Barbarossa. Compass Games and Napoleon's Eagles Storm in the East. This is a card driven game designed to play through two famous battles of the late Napoleonic era, Borodino and Leipzig. This is a game designed by Christopher Moore. And what you get with this game are cards. Lots of cards, a rule book, player eight charts, setup cards, 
a deck of 42 Borodino cards, a deck of 62 Leipzig cards, a deck of 52 French playing cards, and 52 Coalition playing cards, plus 31 other cards, and a box and a lid. Fort Circle Games and the Shores of Tripoli. The Shores of Tripoli tasks one or two players to recreate the swashbuckling episode from early American history. What you get with the Shores of Tripoli is one beautiful 11 by 34 inch mounted game map, rule book, historical booklet, three 27 card decks, two player aid sheets, 82 wooden pieces including frigates, gunboats, corsairs, 24 dice, and several historical documents from the conflict and other educational assets. If you want to get your feet wet, the Dice Tower Cruise is happening, leaving Fort Lauderdale January 24, 2020, and coming back Wednesday, January 29, 2020. Check out the Dice Tower webpage for more information. Another week, another show. I just got back from the Dice Tower 24-hour marathon. Man! First of all, Tom Vassell, Sam Z, uh, Roy, and Kenny, these guys, they work like crazy. I mean, you might think that because, you know, whatever. You might think the board, uh, the, um, the Dice Tower is a, a rinky-dink type operation. Let me tell you, man, these guys are pros. Tom knows what's going on in every single aspect of the Dice Tower. And Sam and Z, these guys are great, great. And behind the scenes, Roy, and Kenny, they do all the technical stuff, make things work. I mean, without those guys, you know, the Tom, Sam, and Z would have a heck a lot of a lot of work more to do. But I had a great time. Um, I lost every single game I played, Euro games. There was too many colors. Uh, uh, things were happening. Uh, nobody was attacking each other. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Oh my god. But anyways. Thanks for watching, guys, uh, and thanks for putting up with me. Thank you to my supporters. Please support this channel. No one is here. Subscribe, like, and thanks to everybody who's helped me um, throughout the years. Mo, David Heath, Stuka Joe, uh, AJ Toynbee, uh, Mark Walker, man, just, Tons of people. The players, they, these guys are great. Um, I, I, I'm blessed doing this. You know that? And having viewers watch this. Because I know how much work goes into this. But to have an operation like the Dice Tower. Man, you need a crew. And even if I would have a crew here. <laughs> I don't think I'd know how to manage it. So, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you next week.